Welcome to Dell Technologies World. It's the premier technology event of the year. Join John Furrier, Dave Vellante, and Lisa Martin as they talk to the trailblazers and trendsetters of future technology. Dell Technologies World 2023 and the Cube, the leader in live and emerging high-tech coverage. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of day one, Dell Technologies World 2023, coming to you live from Las Vegas, Mandalay Bay, Lisa Martin, Dave Vellante. Dave, we've had a great first night so far. We're just scratching the surface. Yeah, we've well. We've been having some great conversations so far, a lot of news today. I'm excited about this next segment because um, you had me at data. So. <laughs> <laughs> Data and AI. One of our alumni is back with us. Jonathan Suckler joins us, Senior Director of Product Marketing at Dell Technologies. Hey. And Ariel Pisetsky, VP IT and Cyber at Taboola. Guys, welcome. Thank you, it's Thanks wonderful a lot. to be here. Yeah. Ariel, let's go ahead and start with you. Give the audience an overview of Taboola. You're a Dell customer, but tell us what you do, your vision, mission, how are you using AI. Give us all that scoop. Okay, sure thing. So, Taboola is a content recommendation platform. So we provide approximately four billion web pages a day. We see about 1.5 billion unique users a month. And we do all of that powered on Dell servers. So we have about 12,000 Dell servers. And for each and every customer, for each and every user that comes to our website or comes to a publisher website, we provide personalized content. To do that personalized content, we do it with AI. So inferencing at the edge, and really deep learning and machine learning at the back end to make sure that we provide the best user experience for any user out there. What's, what's with the name? What does that signify? So tabula comes from the Latin phrase tabula rasa, which means blank slate. So we, we don't know who the user is. We're not like um, any of the other big ad tech companies. You don't log into our service. You don't tell us anything about your affiliation. We just infer everything in real time. And yeah. And so, did you have something to add? No, no, no. no, no. So, so, why didn't you just do this in the cloud? Why, did you, why are you doing this on-prem? So the cloud, while very trendy, is also, another thing, very expensive. The, to operate heavy compute loads, to operate machine learning, to operate AI in the cloud is just so super expensive that our TCO, our total cost of operations, on-prem is that much cheaper using Dell servers, using our own IT systems, and just making it work that much faster and cheaper for the business and for the end, end customer. So Jonathan, it's not like you just, you know, last week invented this class of servers that could service a customer like Ariel. Right. right? You've been at this for a while. What's, the, what's your sort of AI server journey been like? It's obviously been accelerated with all the hype. Right, uh, Just right. in terms of the awareness, but, yeah. but from a, from a product standpoint, a re reality standpoint, take us through that. Yeah, exactly, so, so we've been working with Taboola for three or four or five years oh, now, at least. at least, right? And so, you know, we've been providing the infrastructure for artificial intelligence, uh, you know, during all of that time. And, you know, it started out as, uh, you know, starting out as just being a, a great platform uh, for hosting the data, for, for processing the, the, the models, and, and for you know, delivering the inferencing. But you know, we've then evolved that into a set of validated designs for artificial intelligence that we do for, um, we, do, we have natural language processing, we have uh, uh, you know, general artificial intelligence, uh, and uh, we do uh, some uh, converged I.O. type uh, machine learning ops solutions and things like that. And uh, you know, it's been, uh, really a journey to get customers over that hump of going from a pilot or a proof of concept at, uh, at like I said, at, at a, in the public cloud, to actually like putting something in production. And, and I want to like appreciate that almost everyone who does put something in production is going to end up like Taboola in building their own single tenant infrastructure because of the, the cost of operations, right? I mean, artificial intelligence is still very much a, a high performance computing solution, right? Yes. Did absolutely. it start out like as a, a reference architecture, then then evolved exactly. into a validated design, exactly. and then ultimately exactly the reference a skew, architecture, right? and then we we add design guidance and and uh, testing and validation uh, tools and things like that. Well, it's interesting because like we, yeah. we we're in conjunction with Dell Tech World, we did a bunch of uh, pre-recorded interviews for ISC, right. which is in yeah. Hamburg, and it was very interesting to speak to some of the customers who said, "Look, I'm going to do this stuff on prem because." First of all, it's too expensive. At, at some, I don't know what the crossover point is, some number of thousands of cores, 
It gets way, way expensive when you go beyond experimentation, and they're worried about IP leakage, and they said they want to show it off. All right, they got this cool <laughs> data yeah, center, sure. or even a supercomputer, that they're like, hey, check this out. You know, why should the cloud guys have all the fun? Yeah, I mean, I mean you, you would know more than I, but artificial intelligence is still very much, you know, Unique IP, no matter where you, you know, the stuff that you're doing, no one else is doing. They can't do what Taboola does, right? So it's, you know, it's a, it requires some investment, yeah. So Ariel, talk to us about why Dell. Obviously, we always talk customers have choice. You mentioned working together for quite a few years now. What, what is it about Dell, its innovation, its technologies that really led you to make that decision that this is the right one to power our business? So the short answer, it's easy, it works, it's reliable. And then we can go into a much longer answer of our transition from other vendors into really being a Dell shop through and through because we wanted to have that one-stop shop for support, for the management of the servers themselves, for the security, making sure that we're secure from the chipset to the firmware to the software that we place on the servers the ability to get the architecture help from the sales engineering team and the validated solutions, all of that helps us squeeze more performance out of every core that we bought. So as you said, from thousands of cores, we're running over half a million cores, and at that point, you really, really want to get as many performance cycles as you can out of at each core. So even a 1% bump is really a lot when you're talking about that, that many servers. So Dell was a natural choice, easy to work with, secure, reliable, good support. I don't think you can ask for more. Well, energy has to be a huge concern, obviously. Yes. So how are you, you, get, you, now, the good news is, okay, you've got, you're, you guys are smart enough to know how to manage your own infrastructure and keep your costs down, et cetera, but now you, you, of course, inherit all these other data center issues like power and cooling, how are you addressing that? That's, that's a great question and really thank you for that. So part of efficiency is of course not only squeezing as much as you can in terms of compute, but also really bringing as much power to the IT side in the hosting environment. So not wasting that cost and power on cooling and, <clears throat> sorry, on cooling and other things that you might have in the data center. So with Dell we are able to control fan speeds. We are able to run the servers a bit hotter on the cold side than with other solutions that we have. We are able to really see a full view of the server within our management systems and optimize the airflow, optimize the power pull, optimize the power usage for the different levels of the day where we have more compute coming in or less compute power c coming in. So the load balance, the software load balancer would bring in and distribute all of that into all of the different servers, but when the traffic goes a bit lower in the day, we're able to cycle back with the Dell technology and also cycle back on the power. You, you mentioned you can, uh, you can run hotter on the cold aisle, aisle or side, you said. Right. That means you can, you can, you're saying you can uh, let the temperature rise. Just a bit, be, yes. Just a little bit, I mean, even, but even a couple of degrees is going to make, make a big difference, difference, right? Why is that? Jonathan. Think about it. Well, I mean, computers at the end of the day, I like to think of it as this. It's like you're putting electricity in, you get mathematics out. Yes. And at the end of the day, and, and unfortunately, with the mathematics, you get heat, yeah, right? right? And one thing that Dell is really good at is getting as much math out as you can, by, but dealing with all of the heat. And so, you know, we have, you know, for example, in our latest PowerEdge uh, servers, we've, we've altered the airflow in the servers to improve the airflow through the server so that we can run at higher temperatures, right? And when you're talking about AI and you're talking about millions of cores and thousands of, of, of nodes, you know, you've got to be able to know to get that, like you said, that, that air uh, from the cold aisle to the hot aisle as efficiently as possible to take that heat with you. So, you got the, you got yeah. the A plus in thermodynamics. Yeah. The, so, so what does the AI stack look like? Can you describe that and how is that different than Sort of the everyday stack to run whatever, SAP or, or, or you know, just general purpose applications. Well, I mean, well, you should tell, talk about I'd be cool. happy yeah. to share, yes. yes. So when you're talking about SAP as an example, that's a monolithic application or usually an application that is very heavily bound to a single server, let's call it. When you're talking about AI, you're talking about grids, you're talking about supercomputers, you're talking about hypercomputing, it, it depends on the use case. 
So we have thousands of computers, or thousands of servers, I should say, in the different racks, all connected to each other through a non-blocking network so they can interact and you don't actually have only one CPU solving something or one system with a four-way CPU. You have thousands of CPUs and tens of thousands of cores solving problems as they come in or trying to infer different, uh, I'd say, conclusions for the users that are coming into to the system. You said a half a million cores, did I hear that correctly? Yes. Okay, that's incredible. And so what's the networking like inside there? What's, what, is, it, is it Ethernet talking to? Yes, so we, we are strong believers in Ethernet, so we're using 25 gig networking, and really that is our easiest go-to solution, where we have each server hooked up to a 25 gig port, and then we have the top of rack hook up at 100 and 400 gigs. Is 100 gig in your, your future, or is, it, is, it, is the cost delta too much right now? Because so, they're coming down, uh, uh, compressing. Absolutely, so 25 gig is our default go-to today, and I would guess for the next approximately two years, that's where the, this port is kind of going. It's, it's here to stay, but in terms of new servers coming in, for at least the next two years, we're going to be on 25 gig, and then we're probably going to see the 100 gig to the server itself, as the CPUs themselves become bigger, hotter, and able to also absorb more Process. Because there will be a crossover, I Absolutely. presume. It's like today, you, you wouldn't do a 10 because you got to go to 25, it's the same right. price, it's getting right. for free. So. Jonathan, can you comment? Obviously, what Ariel has described here is a huge deployment, tremendous power going on. Can you comment on the learnings that Dell has gotten from this customer relationship? And as AI is evolving, how are they helping to evolve Dell in that respect? That's a great question. So, with Taboola, we've, like I said, we've been working with with Taboola uh, on their deployments uh, in, in Israel, but also all across Probably, the world. Yes. And it has really um, spurred the need to really understand, you know, from a customer standpoint or a support standpoint, being able to deliver that global support, no matter where Taboola is, you know, not just in terms of, of break in and fix, but, but that AI expertise, that, uh, that uh, uh, configuration expertise, et cetera. And uh, you know, we're taking that and then we're building that back into the portfolio, even as we talk today. So uh, you know, the, the sexy, cool AI technology out there now is this thing called generative AI, like chat GPT. And I, I will say that um, while that is really an exciting technology to see demonstrated, the application is going to be more like what Taboola is doing, where you build it a unique model and a, a, and a unique set of, uh, of tools to help your enterprise solve those problems you know, underneath the covers. So that's where the real value is going to be in the future. I saw, uh, I think it was a Twitter, maybe it was LinkedIn, somebody posted, have you figured out your AI strategy yet? Well, before you figure out your AI strategy, you better, better figure out your data strategy. Right. Do, do you buy that? And, and what is your data strategy? Yes. He doesn't care about data at all, actually, <laughs> as you can tell. So right? when, you, yeah. when you think about, about AI, obviously you need to feed it. It's like a monster that just demands more and more. So the data must be pushed into the algorithms, so or on the training side, or eventually when you want to get answers from them. So for us, on the, on the training side, we do NLU, which is Natural Language Understanding, where we, or NLP, Natural Language Processing, where we would like to understand what an article is about. So we will ingest a whole lot of articles, a whole lot of publish, uh, like publisher web pages online, bring them into our systems, understand what they are and categorize them so we can provide the best content recommendation for that moment. So we'll do that on GPUs, but just think of the sheer amount of data. When we serve four billion web pages a day, how many web pages we need to understand, ingest, and have the computer kind of understand the language and what they are about, not to speak of at least 30 different languages that we support today, and this is all with our internal AI. So when you first saw ChatGPT, yes. were, you, were you like, eh, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> what was your reaction? Take us inside sort of, uh, 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 um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a term of endearment, an alpha geek's brain when you, you first saw that. So ChatGPT is a revolution because really if you think of what my kids, your kids will be talking about in, in 20, 30 years, they're going, oh you had computers? Wasn't that like a typewriter? You had to actually type <laughs> on them? Because ChatGPT is changing the way we will interact. Like emails will suddenly, my English will suddenly be that much more polished. My, my, my spelling would be that much 
better just because of these uh, solutions out there and who knows what's coming 10 years down the road. So it's totally a revolution and it revolutionizes the ability of IT teams to work better. So if I'm taking it just back into our tech world for a second, for anyone that is coding, anyone that is writing scripts, the productivity boost there is astounding. So we, for us, we run those 12,000 servers with about 15 SREs, site reliability engineers, and now I envision 20 and 30,000 servers with the same amount of people. I don't need to grow anymore because ChatGPT is like another friend sitting here helping me whispering in my ear how to code better, how to write better, and how to be better. I think that's the key to all of artificial intelligence. So, you know, we've been looking at ChatGPT as this cool, sexy thing, but what you don't realize is that it's, it's a, it really is a public demonstration of what can be done. But the real value is going to be boosting productivity of employees in all kinds of ways, both predicted, right? You know, like IT, coding, those are, those are, those are, those are going to be like low hanging fruit, right? Uh, but then, you know, who knows what else is coming, right? Uh, Michael Dell was interviewed uh, a, a month or two ago and he said something around, you know, when, you, when, you, when the cognitive power goes to zero, think of the things that you can do. And, and that, that really resonated with me, that this idea that, you know, in every job that you are in, no matter what you do, you spend a lot of that time just trying to find the information you need to make a decision, or you're trying to, um, you know, make sure you've got all your ducks in a row before you pull the trigger or something like that. And, and technology like generative AI inside the enterprise is going to do all that kind of grunt work for you. And it's going to make people, I think it's going to make them more productive, it's going to allow them to be more creative, and so you're, you know, it, it's going to create all kinds of unpredictable consequences. Some of them might not be wonderful, and I know everyone's worried about that, but I think that at the end of the day, it is a, it's a game changer for the, for the, for the, for the economy. And, and, and presumably, like other mind-blowing innovations, the graphical user interface, when you first saw that, you're like, oh wow, the web browser, oh my gosh. Yeah. And then you look back and you're like, wow, that was horrible. <laughs> yeah. you know, I can't imagine what this is going to bring. Exactly. What it's going to bring, exactly. What's your, what is your outlook? I mean. So I think it will really improve us, it will help us be more productive, find things faster, uh, the ability to really ingest a whole lot more information, make it more user friendly. Just think of help pages today. Sometimes when you're looking for, for a technical solution and you find this, this help page and it's hard to read, but if you search it on Bard or on ChatGPT and suddenly you get something that is user friendly, that is for us as users. How will it change publishing is a really interesting question. How will, it, how will it change search? Because suddenly instead of going into just a normal search bar, normal for the last 15 years, where you get all these answers and links to the publishing world, suddenly you're getting the answer and who's going to pay for that? Because that has scanned content that someone actually worked hard to create. So who's going to pay for that? What's going to happen there? There's a whole lot of questions to be asked. You know, even search, when you think about it, you, you had, the way you prompted search in the early days, you had to really think about oh, this yeah. plus that, and now it's all ads. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ariel, take us out with, obviously, a phenomenal use case that Tabula has with Dell, with AI. What's next? Wow, what's next? I would guess that a whole lot more compute in terms of the ability to see more compute units within a single rack. I'm, I'm looking at, if today we're looking at uh, 15 and 20 kilowatt racks, we're going to see much hotter racks with much better cooling, so we will be more environmentally friendly. The whole IT industry needs to be more uh, environmentally friendly, and Dell is really leading that way and helping us as Tabula see the, the future in really being carbon neutral. So, a better so IT will be a better place for the planet, and we will be able to be more user friendly and provide more, I'd say, intuitive services much easier. Awesome, guys, what a great use case. Thank you so much for joining Dave and me on the program today, talking about Taboola and Dell, what you're doing, what you're enabling your customers to do, and the, the horizon seems limitless talking to the two of you. We Absolutely. appreciate your, your enlightening, enlightening comments. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was, it was a pleasure. 
For our guests and for Dave Vellante, and this is Lisa Martin signing off from day one of our coverage of Dell Technologies Big day World. tomorrow, big, big day, day tomorrow. Big day tomorrow. Right, we got Chuck Whitten in the keynotes, I think, right, tomorrow morning? Yes, we do. And then right. Michael's coming on, Chuck's coming on, we got a big, big, big day. We do, wall -wall. and uh, wall-to-wall tomorrow and the next day. We hope you have a great night, we'll see you tomorrow.